Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how to use a game controller inside of your reactor. So let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I've already prepared a little empty app right here, which we can use. And to get started, we're first of all going to define what we're going to display. So my goal is that we're going to display the X and Y axes of the left stick. So basically what the position of the left stick of the controller is and also whether the button A is pressed just so we also measure that and not just the position of a stick. The rest would of course work the same, so the right stick would just be other axes and yeah, the other buttons would of course just be other buttons. Now we've prepared the states for that, now let's also add the styling for it, just so that's done already. X and here we'll display Y and Y. And here we'll just say, okay, if A pressed, then display a div that contains the text A, just so it looks a bit different as well. So now let's get into how that stuff actually works, because if we now go into the browser, we will of course see zeros here, which is fine, but yeah, what do we actually want to do? Well, if we just head to the console real quick and type in clearus so that everything is fresh and new, then we can basically say navigator, navigator dot get gamepads and as you can see that's right now or not but as you might see from the controller being on it's already connected so what's wrong well we need to click into the side hit a few buttons and then if we run this again you should see that there's a gamepad object and here we can see axes and buttons and these are basically the things we're going to measure so unfortunately these things can't be um, read using events so we'll need to basically pull for them. And to do that, we'll of course use a use effect, and that use effect is just gonna run initially and then never again. And here we will basically say, okay, I want to set an interval and also give that interval a variable so that we can remove it when necessary. That interval is gonna get a callback. And for now, we're gonna define a polling rate basically of 100 milliseconds. So to do this now, we're just gonna say, okay, const controllers equals navigator dot get gamepads. This is going to give us the array you saw before with possibly four nulls, but maybe there will also be a controller. We only want to interact with the first controller, so we could also do something like controller is the first element of this call. And now we can basically just say, okay, if controller, so if the controller is not null, then do the following. And in our case, we're going to say, okay, I want to set X to controller dot axis. So basically the position of the two sticks, zero. If you were to just take a look at this right here, you can see that axis contains an array of four numbers. The first one being the pos horizontal position of the left stick. The second one being the vertical position of the left stick. And then the same for the right stick. And as you can see, we can already get a value. So if I now move the left stick all the way to the right, uh, all the way to the left you see minus one all the way to the right you see one and if i slowly pan it then the value slowly moves from one to the other so now changing it for y is quite easy we could just say set y to one and now if we head back to the side and spin the stick around then you can see okay the values update quite nicely the only issue being okay there is of course a bit of a dead zone you'd need to define so basically you'd need to say okay if um, the value is smaller than 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 then don't count it because yeah as you know controllers slightly drift sometimes so you need to define a dead zone if you actually want to use these axes but maybe you just want to use the buttons right so now let's take a look at how you could use this a pressed thing right here so to do that we can say set a pressed to controller dot buttons and this is basically an array so you'd need to look up the mapping for all these buttons in our case button zero is a for an xbox controller or x for a playstation controller so that should be plenty and now if we just take another look right here we see that it's not just working because this is actually an object and the object of course exists that is because we can measure for pressed touched and value touched doesn't really make sense for most buttons, but for some it does. But yeah, pressed is basically what we need, because if it's pressed, then we want a boolean saying, yeah, it's pressed. So now 
you might see that this is a bit shoddy because the controller seems to have some kind of issue right now. But normally, this wouldn't happen. So let's just check if I can fix that. Okay, so it seems like reloading the site did actually fix that. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. Automatically reloading might cause some issues for your development. But now, as you can see, if I press A, then letter A starts existing. And if I spin my stick around, then you can see that the values change. So left, right, up, down. Everything is working just as intended. And yeah, that's basically how you use the Gamepad API. I hope this helps you. If it does, then yeah, I'm happy about that. And also, I hope you're going to have a good day.